Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome President of Microsoft Business Solutions, Kirill Turnoff. Well, good afternoon, folks. It gives me an absolute honor and privilege to welcome you to uh, Dynamics section, Dynamics track here at WPC 2013. As always, we have an exciting program for you. You're going to have a chance to hear from uh, some of our partners. We're going to talk about our past successes. We're going to talk about st our strategy. And of course, we're going to share with you a glimpse of what's there to come in the fiscal year that we just started. But perhaps the most important thing for me to do here is to say thank you. Thank you for all that you do for our mutual customers. Thank you for what you do every day competing and winning. It was incredibly exciting for me to see this morning some of our partners being recognized at the main stage of WPC. David and Claude, it was good to see you there. eSavvy, eBax, MCA Connect, Power Objects. Those are the partners of the year. Let's give them yet again a warm round of applause. Well done, guys. This has not been the easiest of the years. The uh, world economy and macroeconomic conditions remain challenging, and our competitors aren't standing still, which makes those wins, which makes those exciting successes that we generate together so much sweeter. And I thought it would be appropriate for me to recognize some of the amazing new customers that have joined Dynamics family in just the last, last few months. Delta Airlines is busy implementing Windows Phone with Dynamics solution for retailers across all of their flight attendants. Nissan, of course, is implementing Dynamics CRM and Dynamics AX for all of their dealers in Japan, and they're making tremendous success. Nestle, why they continue to maintain their core administrative ERP system with the legacy vendor, they're implementing Dynamics AX for more nimble subsidiaries. And of course, one customer that I'm particularly proud of is the Russia Post. 150,000 people across 40,000 post offices across the vast piece of land will be running on Dynamics AX, and they're busy implementing our solutions. And of course, with each and every one of those wins, there are partners who drove it with us. There's Avanade, there's GMCS, there is TVH, there is uh, Technosoft. All of those organizations worked very closely with us, implementing solution, driving those customers to success, and ultimately delighting them with Microsoft Dynamics technologies. You heard this morning from Steve, from Tammy, and from Satya about exciting transformation we're going through as a company. We're transforming towards the company of devices and services. And in today's world, it is imperative for us to deliver delighting consistent, immersive experience across broad range of devices for people at work and for people at play. And Dynamics has a very important, prominent role to play in this transformation. Our job is to essentially deliver those immers immersive experiences across devices for people at work. Essentially, we are the unifying fabric of all that Microsoft does for business people, for people at work. We pulled together vast innovation, almost $10 billion that Microsoft invests annually in research and development, and we deliver it in a very consistent, specific experiences for people at work, giving them exactly what they need to be better at whatever they do, whether they're selling, whether they're marketing, whether they're running their operations. We're giving them technology that is based on everything that Microsoft has to offer and put it in specific context of their, of their daily jobs and their daily operations. And we're doing it together. We, in, we, we are in this together. Our commitment to our partners and our deliberate dependence on you remains invariant, and that's how we work, and that's how we are going to continue to move into the future. Our vision for business solutions is dynamic business. And our mission is to make every business a dynamic business, a business that does not stand still, a business that looks into the future with high degree of excitement and enthusiasm, the business that endures and prevails in whatever economic conditions they operate in. Dynamic business is also united business. And the message of unity that we now bring to our customers is something that resonates phenomenally well with them. The conversation 
with many businesses in the last several months has certainly shifted in a very unique way. And the role that we have to play together for those customers is very unique and important. We're essentially helping them unify their business. We're helping to unify business with IT. We're helping them unify with our customers. We're helping them unify all of their technology and deliver a consistent set of scenarios. And we're, of course, helping them unify their front office with back office. And dynamic business is the united business. And that message of unity, as you, show, as you saw in those, in those little, little opening videos, is something that is tremendously important for many of those organizations. And this is what we do together. And this is what we deliver for them. Of course, if there is job one for us to play for you, and if there is number one responsibility that we bring to you, to our partners, it's the product and it's technology. And I'm incredibly excited about the next 12 months of innovation that you're going to see from Microsoft. Of course, we're going to kick off the year, as it was announced earlier today, with uh, Microsoft Dynamics CRM Orion update. It will, it will be officially called Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013 with the full update for online version. Yet again, it will ship both online and on premises. We we'll stay true to our message of consistent cloud delivery, whether it's private cloud or public cloud. And our customers will get an incredible innovation running on Windows 8 with HTML5, consistent immersive experience across broad range of devices, truly delighting people that are operating in sales marketing and, um, and support. As we move forward into the year, essentially our entire lineup of ERP products will get updated. Most excitingly, AX will undergo update in the, um, in the, um, in the second half of, uh, of fiscal year, and you will get amazing applications that will run on Windows 8, that will run on phone, that will perform simple tasks for people who already implemented Dynamics AX. Dynamics X for retail will undergo another very important update, yet again delighting people that are engaged in e-commerce and retail scenarios. Dynamics NAV and Dynamics GP will be updated yet again this year. That innovation is just keep on coming to you. And that is on top of very important and very exciting update that we shipped earlier in the, in the year, essentially making Dynamics NAV and Dynamics GP available on Windows Azure. So those of you who work with Dynamics NAV and Dynamics GP, and I know that many of you do, this is probably the largest percentage of people here in the room that are engaged in those, uh, in those technologies. I truly encourage you to uh, look at the option of delivering Dynamics NAV and Dynamics GP to your customers from Windows Azure. And as we move forward, there are two other important updates to Dynamics CRM that are coming. One code named Mira. This is essentially an update to marketing pilot technology that was acquired last year. And Dynamics CRM Leo that will bring very important update, very important, very significant, very significant update for customer service scenarios. So as you can see here, the investment in this business continues. We continue to pour significant resources in research and development, and we continue to give you what we consider the best of business solutions from Microsoft, truly running on the entire lineup of all Microsoft products that you saw earlier today. And Dynamics plays very important, pivotal, central, unifying role for all that Microsoft delivers to, um, to our business customers. With that, I want to say thanks. I want, to thanks, I, I want to say thanks for all that you've done with us together in the last 12 months. I look forward into the next 12 months with the highest degree of excitement and anticipation for even more successes and even more customers that we're going to bring together, even more customers that we're going to delight, even more customers that we're going to save from the legacy of business applications of the past and move them into the future with high degree of confidence and enthusiasm. And with that, I want to bring Neil Holloway here on stage, who will share some more thoughts and who will um, talk about some specific details that we can do together as we move into uh, the fiscal year that we just started. Thank you very much. Enjoy WPC. So good afternoon.
It's a, it really is a great pleasure to be here. I was listening this morning to some words which kind of really resonated to me. And first of all, Steve talked about you, and he talked about you being our most loyal partners. And building on what Carol says, it, our success is based on your success. And it really was very important just to listen to kind of what Steve said about loyal partners. The other thing, two or three things popped. One was, if you came here before and weren't too sure whether we as a company were betting on devices and services, I think following this morning, it's very clear for me and very clear for you that absolutely, as all organizations, all companies are transforming, we're no different. Yet, it very clearly brings an amazing opportunity for all of us with regard to devices and services. Now, I've been in the company 23 years, and trust me, three, four years ago, on the main stage, Dynamics wasn't mentioned. But if you take a step back and you go back and look at the videos that kind of what, what Steve talked about and what Satya talked about, wow, the language of dynamic business and look at the demos and look at the power. And I mean, when Satya started, I th one of his slides to me just, just landed so well. It talked about devices and it's all about the people and the devices which they use. Then he talks about how do you make those people those individuals kind of more productive. Then it builds into collaboration. And he talked about, and Steve talked about, social being kind of woven in and not being forced. But then the most powerful thing for me that Satya said, which is about the business processes, and it's about the imagination that it's around the business processes that really bring to life the opportunity we have, whether that's in the enterprise space or the mid-market space, whether you're in Asia, whether you're in EMEA, whether you're in the Americas. It's all about how we bring together that imagination. So I've had the opportunity over the last 12 months to spend a lot of time doing air miles, a lot of time meeting customers in offices, in restaurants, in bars. And I learned many things, learned many things during that travel, right? I suppose one of the humbling things I learned is that we, Microsoft, maybe made it a little bit hard for you in some situations. The transition from 9 to 12 AX, in hindsight, could have been easier for all of you. Right? Some of you have been focused on selling CRM, and absolutely we're looking clarity around our strategy around mobile and social. Right? We made some changes to the margins, which we got very good feedback, and we actively listened. Right? We, we didn't do enough readiness in some of the products, and we didn't do enough kind of partner marketing with you through to the customer. All of which is quite humbling when you listen to the feedback from you, yet based upon the feedback from you, certainly the ones had the opportunity to interact with over the last kind of six months, we listened, we've changed, and we'll continue to change. The other thing you learn from all those conversations, just like you do, when you sit there listening actively to the customer, their expectations of us, Microsoft, and the expectation of you, the, of the business partners, has changed a lot. It's changed significantly. And it begs the question, and I often ask myself the question, what does it mean for us? And what does it mean for you? And how together can we win? What is that North Star that we're reflecting on? And how should we evolve our own business strategy to, to maximize that? One thing which is so clear to me, when I listen to the customer expectations, and you just look at some of the videos, the videos that Julie showed this morning, that took you everywhere from the Office 365, into SharePoint, into Yammer, into CRM, integrated social. That absolutely, what our customer needs is the solution, the end-to-end -end solution to solve that customer problem. If you think about all of us, you, me, you think about what it means as we blur between one minute in the home environment, next minute we're in the work environment, next minute in the home environment. Our expectations of what we should do and how we do it in those two worlds and how they blur together has completely changed. And that gives an opportunity for all of us. And also, it's interesting when you sit here and Kevin's going to talk on Wednesday and he's going to talk about competing to win. I think about how we compete to win 
how we differentiate to win, and how we innovate to win. And I think about what that means. And you say, well, actually, who are our competitors? Absolutely, you'd say Oracle, you'd say Salesforce, you'd say Sage, you'd say NetSuite, you'd say Salesforce, you'd say many others. But when you think about an Oracle and SAP, they were kind of born in the process world. Right? When you listen to some people talk about a NetSuite or Salesforce, well, they're born in the cloud. When you think about us, and you think about what we stand for, we're unique, right? Because we're actually born about the people, the individuals, and what they do in their home life and what they do in, the, in their business space. So when you think about the business solutions, and you think about how you deliver the solutions which you saw this morning, right? So much is around how do you deliver these unique, these individual kind of experiences for complete business solutions? And what does that mean? And what does that mean together? So I thought I'd spend a little bit of time now breaking that down. And obviously, you're very clearly successful businesses already. The reason you're here is because you're successful. So I want to share some stories and some examples that hopefully, as you listen to some of them, you're going to tease out a little bit for what it means for you, for your business, and how you should evolve your business strategy. The first one I want to come back to is this high-value customer experience. If you uh, have a role as a marketing manager and how you think about managing that campaign and how you think about how you get better return on investment from marketing, or you're the sales rep and you're thinking about how do I make sure I've got the, the, the insight for the customer that I'm going to sell to, right? That the live information that's going to make it real when you're stood in front of that customer. Or I'm the person who's running the, the new plant I've just built. So much comes back to what is the experience you're going to make for the person who's going to work inside the company. And we've talked a lot this morning with regard to it's all focused on the customer, right? But so much to me is not just based upon the customer. It's absolutely about the customer's customer, right? Because in the world where we live today, the consumer is king. Ultimately, generally, whichever business you're in, whether you're B2C or B2B, you're eventually going to get B to B to C. Therefore, how we think about these experiences that we have when we're looking in, when we're kind of looking into the company, what are those experiences? And how do you differentiate them? And if there's one thing here that really just comes to life to me, it's about imagination. How can you get the imagination for the people who work inside these businesses to see the art of the possible. That's one of our roles for you, for me, to make sure we're sparking this imagination around the high value of customer experiences. Also, for all of you, you very clearly had a successful business strategy today. Like I said, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But if you take a step back and you look at some of the, the examples of demos, and even if you take that brilliant demo Amir did, right at the end when he was using big data and he had this fantastic graphic of the music, right? Just brilliant. It's really brought to life the power of it, right? It still says, and you start integrating that in. In today, I think generally for most of you, you're pretty clear with regard to where you are the business expert, right? But when you think about the opportunities and the opportunities this technology is going to enable you to deliver to the customer, Asking yourself the question, where are we the business expert of tomorrow rather than just today, I think is so important. One of the things that I've learned when I've listened to lots of the businesses, it's quite interesting how you're changing the people who work inside your company. As people move to the cloud and they move away from having all these technical people to do the work to get the, to get the solution deployed inside the organization, Yet, the power comes back to the imagination. It comes back to how you can bring to life the sales and marketing and customer care and the customer service. Absolutely, people are saying, well, actually, this is the workforce I used to need, but now this is the workforce I need. When you think about your company, by the time a customer kind of, you start talking to a customer, they probably now know more about you today than they ever have done. Customers, when they reach out now, 
are probably 60% of the way through the sales cycle. They have a deep understanding. So how you present yourself, how you're running your organization from a marketing perspective, what are you doing to make sure that the people who are looking at you, right, looking at your company and understanding what are you providing, making that the very rich environment for your own company, just in the same way as you're trying to sell it to another organization, is super clear. So if these customers are all the way through 60% of the sales cycle, what does it mean for my workforce? What does it mean for your sales force? About where they, can where they need to provide the deep expertise that they're going to have to be able to compete to win. And you think about all the, how you deliver solutions and that ability to do faster return on, on investments. It's super important to think about your delivery capability and what that is required, not now, but in three years' time. The final one is complete solution offering. Now, I'm not the first Microsoft person to talk, stand on this stage and talk about partnering. So why am I saying it different? What's different now? Right? Again, when the solution embraces multiple products, right, and historically you may have been focused in one kind of particular solution area with one particular product, it becomes very clear that actually in the new world, what you'd very, you have two choices, really, as companies. You have the choice that basically says, I'm going to build out the expertise inside my organization as it goes from AX to CRM to SharePoint to Yammer to big data to devices. Or I can take the other decision that says, OK, how do I think about partnering? But this is different. This is about strategic partnering, because absolutely, coming back to what the customer needs, if the customer needs much more of a complete solution, what do you need to do? You somehow you need to do it one way or the other. The other thing is obvious right, for all of us. If you sit in this room today, I'm sure that mo most of the, kind of the CEOs in the rooms are also thinking another option. It basically says, OK, how do I also think about kind of mergers that are going to ha naturally happen? Some of those have happened already. But in this pace of change and the customer expectations, what is absolutely we should all do is stay open, right? Stay open to the opportunity with regard to mergers and acquisitions. So if that's the context, what I'd like to do is now switch gears, right? So if that's where we are, right? This blend between high value experiences, between your clear business strategy, and then aligning to what it means with regard to complete solution offering. What I want to do is just take you through um, three partners, three different stories in the enterprise, in the SMB, to share with you